So today I'm going to talk about pelvic floor devices. Probably the most common question I get is what are your thoughts on yoni eggs or pelvic floor exercise trainers or that type of thing. So it's, um, it's time to answer that question. My number one, the number one thing that I say in response to that question is before you invest in any type of device, invest in seeing a pelvic floor physiotherapist because not every pelvic floor needs the same thing. And many people interpret symptoms as weakness and then they think the cure for weakness is Kegel exercises. And then they think, well, if Kegel exercises are good, then a device must be better. And weakness can be from many different things, not necessarily just lack of tone. It can be too much tone, or it could just be a matter of the breath and that core system, what I call the core four, not working synergistically. It could also be scar tissue. It could be misalignment of the bones. There's so many things that can contribute to pelvic floor function. So it's important to have a thorough assessment and understand if you have symptoms, because not everybody does, if you have symptoms, what they mean and what could be contributing to them. And then if a device is something that would be beneficial for you. So I am a supporter of Kegels and I am a supporter of Kegels even if somebody has too much tone or a non-relaxing pelvic floor. And the reason I say that is because we, we need to take the muscles through the full range of motion still regardless. And the difference is though, people who have non-relaxing pelvic floors, they are going to spend more time focusing on the release and the down training and maybe just a tiny bit focused on the up training until they get that balanced out. So I'm not gonna remove the up training completely, I'm just going to have it way down on the totem pole and the down training being the priority. So having an understanding of what your pelvic floor needs is really, really critical. And then from a device perspective, you want to understand if a device could be beneficial and then what device would be most beneficial. So another caveat I say on devices is I do like the biofeedback ones. So the ones that provide you with some sort of visual as to what you might be doing and that can help you practice and learn the up training, but also the down training, the down training side. The thing with Yoni eggs is I like aspects of them. And really bottom line is if you've had a pelvic floor assessment and you feel that something tactile, whether it has biofeedback or, or not, would help you with consistency in your training or help give you some sort of reference to what you're doing, then by all means do so if, if your pelvic floor physio has helped you determine that it might be appropriate. But with yoni eggs or kegel eggs or anything, any sort of vaginal weight, I don't love the idea of putting something inside and then wandering around and doing things while working, well, basically while holding it in there because that kind of works, excuse my cat photobomb here. It, it doesn't, again, necessarily take the pelvic floor through a range of motion. It trains the pelvic floor to hold on to something in a static motion. So it's kind of like if I was at the gym and I'm doing a bicep curl, it's, it's like I, I lift my weight and then I wander around the gym like this. And so it's not necessarily the most functional approach to training. So, um, so I'm, I, if I was going to recommend one thing, I would recommend a biofeedback trainer. So the ones that I like are the PeriFit. Uh, this is the PeriFit and this is hooked up. So you, you basically, you get an app on your phone and it allows you to see. So when you're contracting and relaxing, it shows you on a screen um, different things. So I think there's one that's butterflies and birds and it shows you kind of jumping and you have to move them over obstacles. It's kind of like, um, you know, video games from back in the eighties where you'd have to jump over things or what have you. So I like that aspect. I like the visual feedback that people get from it and it tracks your, your progress, it tracks your activity. 
Um, so that would be one that I do like. It's a really nice shape. Um, I like the feel of the, the silicone that they use. So Perifit is one that I do recommend. The other one that I like, and this is usually the one that I recommend people start with, if they have seen their pelvic floor physio and it's been determined that they would benefit, potentially benefit from some sort of training device. What I like about the LV, this looks like a little sperm actually, what I like about the LV is that it can distinguish between a contract and lift and a bearing down. So a lot of people think they're doing a Kegel when they're actually bearing down and not necessarily contracting and lifting their pelvic floor. So I like starting out with the LV. Um, not as much feedback as the PeriFit. So I know some people start here and then when they want a little bit more interaction, they start to use the PeriFit. So those would be my top two and those are the ones that I recommend the most and I recommend them over Yoni eggs uh, as a personal opinion. The other device that I do really like is the V-Sculpt and this is like, I call it my vagina lightsaber and I'll show you why in a minute. So the V-Sculpt is, it's kind of like a giant dildo and you could use it as a dildo if you want to. Um, it uses vibration and heat and light. And so it's addressing things beyond just the muscle activity. It's addressing the tissue as well. So it can help with dryness and laxity. So people who are entering menopause and are dealing with dryness or atrophy or what they call genitourinary syndrome of menopause, this can be something that is um, helpful and much less expensive and more accessible than the lasers and light therapies and, and radio frequency technologies that you see in the Medi spas. Um, so this one, when you turn it on, you have different settings in terms of um, how long you want your training to be. And then once you're ready to start it, oops, I turned it off. No, nope, this one ran out of juice. Sorry, let me see if I plug this in, if it'll hang on. So once you, well, I'm losing the effect now because I think I've, I've used it too much, but this will actually light up and all of these lights, they light up and become red. So this is where the, the LED light and the heat is coming from. And so it's a combination of the light, the heat and the vibration that I really like. And the vibration is uh, something that, so if you're using this and you are um, so if you imagine this is inserted in the vagina and you're contracting, so you're contracting and lifting, so you're doing a kegels against it, it doesn't give you feedback. There's no app that it connects to, but the vibration helps enhance the recruitment of muscle fibers in the pelvic floor. So there's lots of research with regards to vibration training, those vibration platforms that you've seen. There's lots of people using those in fitness and, um, and seeing some really great gains. And I love that aspect of it. And I'm bringing that, the influence of that into the pelvic floor with the, the V-Sculpt. So you, when you add vibration to your training, it enhances the recruitment of the pelvic floor muscles. So you're getting more bang for your buck. The vibration can also be used for uh, self-pleasure, which that's another place where I say you can bring your kegels into because it enhances the the pleasure sensation and then when you reach orgasm it's kind of like a super kegel but it's being done involuntarily so kegels are done voluntarily we're making it happen whereas an orgasm is involuntary so the muscle contractions are actually happening without us making them happen so sorry about my light not turning on but um, it's probably good because it's quite blinding and you can't actually see my face so but it would have been a good christmas light because it's it's red Anyway, um, that is the last of my 12 days of Chris Muff, and I hope you have found them valuable. So today really was, was focused on the Kegel devices and my answer to that. So those would be my top three, the ones that I recommend the most. And uh, any other questions at any time, please comment or send me an email, Kim at vaginacoach.com. I love, I love answering questions and would be happy to do so. So thanks for following the Kegel Advent and I hope that you've been putting them into practice because this stuff only works if you do it and if you do it correctly 
and consistently and coordinated with movement. See you next time.